I'm delighted to be here. This is a very special event because it, we are here to celebrate the completion of that plan to end homelessness in Fort Collins. And this process started well over two years ago with university connections, a lot of partnerships, CSU, DDA, uh, the Community Foundation, uh, the, the best of what's uh, good about Fort Collins and those kinds of public-private partnerships with the city playing the role that I think is very appropriate as an enabler and a catalyst. And so we help things, uh, we help things go. The first year was devoted to defining the problem for the first time, done extremely well. Then we went with the problem defined, now we needed to do the plan. That's what we're celebrating today is the completion of that plan. That's where we hired uh, Bryce. Again, partnerships uh, and the city uh, served that role as a neighbor. I wanted to, um, uh, uh, in that theme, Partnerships Will Benefit Mission in August was a soapbox written by Phil Mangano, who is the president and CEO of the American Roundtable to Abolish Homelessness, and they're in Boston. And he has been a consultant for Denver and, and for us uh, and a help in this process. I just want to read a couple paragraphs from what, from what he said, because he said it better than I could. The significance to me of today is the partnerships, and after me you're going to hear from some of those partners and players. Phil says, as someone who has worked with hundreds of communities across our nation and beyond, I have rarely seen the breadth and inclusiveness of partnership that has been constellated around the Fort Collins 2020 plan. The political will of your elected and appointed officials, the civic will of your business and philanthropic, uh, philanthropic communities, the social and personal will of your faith and community agencies and leaders, and the journalistic recognition of the depth of the personal tragedies and the opportunity for community remedies. In my visits to your city, I learned the Fort Collins way. When we are all partnered in the community, action is inevitable and results are certain. Great day in Fort Collins. Thank you for being here, and I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, right. Bryce. Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Dave Edwards, and I have the pleasure of being involved in the, in the initiation and creation of University Connections. Uh, in a sense, University Connections uh, was and still is very much a grassroots effort. And what has us here today on the cusp of implementing a 10-year plan to end homelessness in Fort Collins uh, by the year 2020 started within the collaboration of University Connections. Uh, it was an idea uh, principally championed and consistently and persistently championed by Sister Mary Alice Murphy. And through seven months of convening uh, over 150 people each month to come up with the stakeholders report in May of 2007, Sister Mary Alice at every meeting would talk about the homeless who are around us here in Old Town and along the river. Uh, this is their domain. And if great things are going to happen in this area, Sister Mary Alice in a very, very quiet conversation convinced us that we must and we had to address the issue of homelessness, not just here in Old Town, but community-wide. Through University Connections, interestingly, numbers of task forces were created, and through the process, there at that point was not a homeless task force. Sister Mary Alice had convinced us that it was absolutely a necessity to do that, and so through Chris Nealon's effort and then Jim Sprout, uh, they volunteered to step forward and they initiated the Homelessness Task Force. So uh, just by oral history, I'd like for Chris to then tell you uh, what transpired from that point, which has now uh, been uh, over a two-year effort to get to this point where the design phase has been completed and now we're about to embark on implementation. Who's counting, but it's actually been over three years that we've been together. <laughs> But um, yeah, as, as Dave said, we began as an initiative of the University program. And most of the initiatives from University were happening in this area. And our goal at the time was to make sure that for any of the environmental or artistic or economic, 
sorts of efforts that were happening down here that at least, at the very least, the needs and the issues surrounding the homeless and how they would be impacted by those initiatives would be taken into consideration before any of those initiatives went forward. So that was our very first goal. Well, along the line, we were really, really fortunate to be introduced to a whole new, bold, grand vision of um, the initiatives around the country that were happening to actually end homelessness. So it went beyond servicing the needs of the homeless and managing the, the issues that the homeless had to saying, we can end homelessness. And we were introduced to some people who are very close to us who were really working on this. And Mayor Hickenlooper in Denver was an early adopter of the whole initiative around ending homelessness. And uh, Jamie Van Leeuwen was his um, appointee to head that effort up in Denver. How many of you have heard of Denver's Road Home Project? Okay, that's what it was. And it was one of the first in the country. And so they were just so generous with their time and information and everything that they had learned. They had already been in existence about five years. And they came up and really helped guide us into thinking that it was a possibility. And they introduced us then to Philip Mangano, who was at that time a presidential appointee to the U.S. Interagency Council to End Homelessness. And Philip Mangano was really the lead visionary who said, we are going to abolish homelessness. The only place, he said this two years ago when he came, the only place our grandchildren will be able to see and understand homelessness is in museums. Because they just won't, it just won't happen anymore. Well, we were here in August of 2008, and with the leadership of um, our mayor, city council, and our city manager, we signed a proclamation and became part of, at that time, 250 other communities across the country who had the same grand, bold vision that we could end homelessness. And in fact, it went beyond even um, the U.S. boundaries, and it's an international movement. And Bill and I, my husband and I, were um, in London and had an opportunity to to meet with the people in London who have the same program to end homelessness. Tony Blair actually started the initiative there. So it's uh, Mayor Bloomberg and Mayor um, Newsom from Bloomberg from New York and Newsom from San Francisco. But in addition to that, communities like Duluth, Minnesota, and Fargo, North Dakota, and Boise, Idaho. And now there are 500 communities in the country who are working and have a 10 year plan to end homelessness. So we are in good company. The, the community out there working on this is absolutely delightful in terms of sharing what they've learned and what they know and the approaches that they've used. And we've been able to now add to some of that knowledge and also receive some of it. So it's just been fantastic. Once we, dis once we signed the proclamation that we were gonna have a 10 year plan to end homelessness, then we decided, how are we gonna do it? So um, we, we went about securing some funding and um, we were, <laughs> and we were, we were really fortunate, as um, Mayor Hutchinson said, we have a community that just supports bold initiatives. So the funding that we received with um, financial and in-kind in, in support came from the city of Fort Collins, um, United Way, Gordon Thibodeau, the executive director, has been with a, a part of this for the three and a half years that we've been in existence. Um, that we are an initiative of the Community Foundation of Northern Colorado. They have actually housed our initiative and really given us, as a group of volunteers, that support that we need, that ongoing support. Um, so in addition to the city and United Way and the Community Foundation, we also received support from the Bohemian Foundation and the Ceramis Foundation. Bryce has a wonderful office up there in the Ceramis headquarters. Um, and then we've had a lot of private donations. So it's the kind of broad-based support that initiative needs to really know that there is some political will behind such an initiative that's really pretty, it's, it's, there's a lot to it. It, it does take a village. I know that's overused, but it does take a village. So we got some funding, and then we were able to hire an executive director. We had over 100 applications, excellent, amazing applications, for um, the, the position of executive director. And um, a lot of sk very skilled people, and from that, we were able to hire Bryce. Who is there anyone in Fort Collins who doesn't know Bryce? 
That's what I, I really wonder at this point. And that's exactly what we needed. We needed someone who really could, could do the research and, and understand the problem and meet people and build community and, and get out there and, and really work with the amazing organizations that have served the homeless in our community for two decades or more. And so Bryce did, and he, um, we, we were able to work with, and some of these people were on the early committees too. Wendy Robinson, who's here, I know. Where's Wendy? Wendy from um, Neighbor to Neighbor, and for, formerly with the Food Bank, with um, Mary Rob, Mary, I, Mary, I'm, Atchison, sorry. Yeah, Mary Atchison from Pathways Past Poverty, Helen Summersall from The Mission, um, just Jim Cox from the um, Housing Authority and Julie Bruin from the Housing Authority. And we have had, the great thing is, we have had very, very innovative work done in our community already in terms of meeting the needs of the homeless. And that's what we get to build on here. So, when, as Bryce was hired, he began to do all that research. We, got, we were able to commission some studies and some research from some researchers at CU and CSU. And we um, have now a landscape kind of of what, what are all the services, who are the homeless, and we have found, and, and I specifically have really come to learn, that there is not just one face of the homeless. And we are really looking at the myriad needs, the myriad reasons, the myriad kinds of actions that it's going to take to make sure that homelessness in Fort Collins is rare, short-lived, and non-recurring. And who, who in this crowd today is, has served in some way on a, on a community service organization or as a professional to deal with the needs of the homeless? So, I mean, it's, it's just phenomenal what's been done in our community already. And some of the things, as Philip has told us, are innovative and will be replicated in other communities. So we have a great, great base to go from. And um, the committee itself has been together, as I said, over three years and very committed. And I'd like to introduce who they are. So it's um, Dave Edwards, uh, Mike Dellenbaugh, Cheryl Zimlick, Bill Neeland, Bill Joyner, who I don't think is here today, Julie Bruin, Gordon Thibodeau, Sister Mary Alice, Ray Carraway, and we have um, three emeritus members, Jim Sprout, Mike Sollenberger, and Doug Johnson, who with, from University Connections just gave us a lot, of, a lot of the support we needed to just get us off the ground in the beginning. So it's been a lot of people. And we are so excited with the research that's been done now with the ground, laying, laying the groundwork, that in Fort Collins we are going to, by the year 2020, Homer 2020, that's the other thing we did, worked on a logo and a name. Any of you ever been involved in working on a logo and a name? <laughs> How many of you think that's an easy process? I think if we can do that, we can end homelessness. So we all agreed on colors, a name, font, all of that. So, and. Um, we had a lot of help with, from um, Gretchen and A-Train with that. They really were the ones that helped us, so it's been a lot of people. So, we're here today to launch our plan, and our plan, the vision of our plan, we want everybody to remember this and to really think about how we can do it, is that homelessness in Fort Collins is rare, short-lived, and non-recurring. And when they give out awards, whoever gives out all those awards for the great things that cities do and that we win so many of, we want to win the award for making sure that homelessness in Fort Collins is rare, short-lived, and non-recurring. And that's what we're about here today. And is anyone here from the Coloradoan? Well, I think they deserve an award for that amazing, amazing series that they did on and teaching and informing all of us about the, the issues around homelessness. And we like to thank them for that too. And now I'd like to introduce um, a fellow community member and a new friend of mine. Paul, you want to come up? Paul Murray. And Paul is going to share with you a little bit about his experience in um, being homeless. And I, I, one more thing that as we've looked at all of the issues around homelessness and met with a lot of the agencies and the support groups and the interfaith councils and so forth. We've also had a lot of focus groups with homeless to really understand what the issues are, what the needs are, and what their ideas are. They know better than anybody what it's going to take. So with that, I will turn this over to Paul. Good morning. Um, as 
Chris just said, my name is Paul Murray. Uh, I saw the things in the Colorado uh, last week or the week before, whenever it was. And as Chris just said, something peaked in my head. Uh, well, let's have a big hand for the Colorado, but it was two days. That's it. You don't hear anymore. Keep this alive. We need to keep it alive because it's not going away by, okay, the Colorado did two days. Terrific. Now what? Um, I just finished a book on the Founding Fathers it's called The 5,000-Year Miracle. I'm not quite sure if that is the exact name. Um, how the Founding Fathers were of one mind on a lot of stuff. Um, adamant about going into debt. Adamant about certain things for our country. Um, so when I saw the thing in the Colorado, I called up Bryce and said, I've been homeless on and off for the past five years. Um, why don't I start being proactive and start trying to help out rather than just sitting like a lump? We all have a little time to give. We all have ideas to share. Um, let's try to be of one mind on this so that we can go forward, you know, baby steps, if you will, um, that way. Um, I called up Bryce. He said, yeah, let's meet. We met right away. I met him yesterday for the first time. Um, he said, try to keep this as simple as possible. Sure, Bryce. <laughs> um, a couple of things. As I was telling Bryce yesterday, there are a couple of things that I can go back on in my own experience. One is the Salvation Army back east in New York. Another was, uh, what the heck was it? Harvest Farm, which I know a lot of people who come from there being the good boy that I am, being on, have been on probation, I'm no angel. And you, and you run into trouble when you're homeless, but we'll get into that in a little bit, uh, trying to keep this as short as possible. Um, these, when you're out there on your own and wondering if you're gonna have a roof over your head that night, it's very hard to think about what I'm gonna do tomorrow morning, to focus on something. Our, our little, the little things we do every day, whether it be making a pot of coffee, whether it be uh, walking the dog in the morning, um, these little things we do are all very important to us as individuals because it gives us a track to run on. And a lot of times when you don't have a track to run on, you don't have money in your pocket, you're going to get screwed up. What did they say? An idle mind is the devil's workshop. That happens. Believe me, it happens. I think a lot of folks that are homeless as well, are off their medications. They might be need help as far as medical is concerned. Um, I think that may be as, as big as half of it. The other half is folks who just don't know what to do. Now, I'm not saying throw money at the situation, but we need everybody to become proactive. Everybody needs to become involved. If we become involved, then things are going to feel like we're all doing this together. And there's nothing more important than that. You see your work in front of your face, and you say, wow, I was part of that. You know, where do we go from here? So we continue to build. We got to go slow, but by the same token, I mean, if I could get up in the morning, and I have a hole to dig, but I know I have a roof over my head, and someone's going to give me something for this hole I'm digging, I'm going to dig it. You know, and it's not going to be a real big deal to me. I'm going to enjoy digging that hole, because it's given me a purpose. And let's just take it from there and then help folks build. Um, according to Bryce, there's a whole lot of agencies looking at this. And, and maybe we're putting a little money here. Maybe we're putting a little money there. This is a real, real job. And this is going to be real work. So make no mistake about it. Don't think you can just show up and go, OK, great, I did this. Like, you know, just using the Colorado example. And not to beat the Colorado, just as an example, two days, boom, and they're gone. Every day they should run something small in here. Just something small. You can't tell me you can't put a, a paragraph in the Colorado that means something? Come on. You know what I mean? So let's, let's look at things as one step. Keep it as simple as pop possible initially so that we can start making steps to cure homelessness. All right? Um, obviously, I guess we're, we're meeting here today because you guys have spent two years doing things. That's a long time for someone who's homeless. You know, they may be dead. They may be in the hills. They may have gone someplace warm so that they're not freezing their toes off at night. Um, so now that you've done what you've done, now the work really starts. 
So um, that's about all I can give you as far as that is concerned. I mean, if you have any questions about anything, by all means, ask away or as I'm walking around, whatever the case may be. But we all need to help one another ask questions, communicate, and stay involved. Thanks. Good morning, everybody. That was a great talk. That's who we need to hear more from are the folks that are experiencing what it's like to be homeless. And I'm really lucky because I'm surrounded on both sides by people who have been homeless recently and are here to talk about it so we understand what it's like. Um, I'm Sister Mary Alice Murphy and the main thing that I'm going to talk about, although it's been covered rather well, is that there are a lot of agencies standing right here who have worked for years with the homeless. While this is a new initiative, we stand on the shoulders of those people who've gone before us who have worked with the homeless without a whole lot of publicity and flair. That's not likely to be a job where you're going to get a whole lot of pats on the back. It's something you know you should do and you should get in there and do the best you can. So we're standing on the shoulders of the agencies, many of whom are here with representatives today. I'm proud to be part of that community because it's from them and from the homeless themselves that I get the energy that I need to be able to go out and do the work that needs to be done. And you're right, it takes everybody. Anyone that can absent themselves from it, talk to me <laughs> and I'll tell you what you can do because there's work for every single person. We want to make this a beautiful community and not just choice for the choice people. We want a choice for everybody and that's very, very important. So I'd like to mention, I, I don't even dare start to talk about some of the best practices we have in town because I'm afraid I'll leave somebody out and I would never want to do that. But there are many things going on that, you know, even Philip Mangano, who's gone across the whole country and seen all the different things that are available, he commends us for some of the things that we have going. And I just want to thank the agencies who are here and say without their cooperation, we wouldn't be standing here today and we wouldn't have a 10-year plan. I can guarantee you that because they have been working for many years with the homeless and without a whole lot of publicity or pats on the back. So I'm just here to say that there's a lot of work that's been done already, but because there's a lot of work that's been done already, we need to do more. We need to make it better. And we need to do the best job that we can possibly do. And I know this city is up to it. We together, can do great things. It's, we've got leadership from the top down to the very people who've been homeless themselves. And when someone wakes up one day and says, I need to get active, that's the day, a new day beginning for everybody. So I would also like to say that we're trying our best to get a permanent day shelter going. And again, it's a cooperation of agencies that's going to make this possible so that we do not have to go out and build a new building. Two agencies are opening their heart to be able to take care of the homeless during the day so that scarce resources are going to be spent well. So I thank you all and I'm very happy to introduce Mary Michael Justin. Hi, Hi. I am your neighbor. I am an old town aficionado I am a passionate lover of Fort Collins. You probably saw me at the Tour de Fat wearing white satin pajamas next to my best friend wearing her red satin pajamas. Not on a bike, but having a tea party on the corner of Mountain Avenue and waving and hooting and hollering. Um, sorry, Don, I didn't see you in the bicycle parade. Caught up with you on Facebook, though. <laughs> um, if not there, you've seen me at Jay's because I love jazz music and Sam makes the best Cosmos in Fort Collins. <laughs> if not there, you've seen me at Ace Gillette because I love jazz and everyone should receive the personal treatment that Ray gives when he gives you a drink. 
Oh, if not there, you see me walking street atmosphere or playing with the little kids in the fountains. I'm one of the adults who will actually do that, play with the kids <laughs> in the fountains. And you all are jealous. And as of three weeks ago or so, when the Colorado in article came out, I realized for the first time that I also am one of the homeless in Fort Collins. That takes a hell of a lot of guts for me to admit. I am not currently um, homeless, thank God. But it only takes one job loss, one major medical bill, one death in the family before someone doesn't have a roof over their head. And as soon as that happens, your job search stops. You're worried about where you're going to wipe your butt. You're worried about where you're going to lay your head. You're worried about if you can eat something at the shelter because you're gluten intolerant. And for me, I didn't want to admit that I was homeless because that would have meant that I would have to admit that I was desperate. I am a college educated woman. I am well traveled. I am articulate and I love this town. And I am the face of 90% of the homeless here in Fort Collins. 90% of them look like me. Hidden and ashamed and not willing to come forward. Because we're doing everything we can to convince ourselves that life is okay and we can move forward. When you're the cheerleader, the coach, and the football team, you can't afford to let anyone feel desperate. I remember saving up all my money for laundry in quarters and going to the water park at City Park just so I could feel part of the community. I remember letting friends take me out for a Cosmo at Jay's or even saving up to do it myself because that is cheap, sweet therapy to belong, to happen to see the mayor over there and wave, to listen to Mark Schlonecker for hours on the piano, to just really enjoy life, quality of life. That's what we have here. And that's the thing that kept me from being desperate. I'd much rather have my face associated with Tour de Fat. I'd uh, much rather have my face associated with Jay's. But the fact is, I am a member of the community. I am a member of the formerly homeless community. I am a member of Fort Collins. We are so, so lucky here. We have SUV drivers and we have cyclists. We have cat lovers and we have dog lovers. We've got omnivores, we've got vegans, you name it, we've got it. And we have people with a shelter over their head and those who don't, and they look like you and you and you and me. Fort Collins, it's time for us to embrace all of our neighbors. Thank you. As a part of this job, I've given um, a few speeches uh, over the course of the last uh, 16, 17 months since I've become director of Homeward 2020. And in many cases, I give a speech maybe that is before or after some other speaker, but I must say, 
I don't think I've ever, <laughs> in some respects, been more intimidated coming after a speech like the one that Mary, Mary Michael Justice just provided. So thank you so much. That was absolutely incredible. And, and I, I also want to thank, I really appreciate you, Paul, for coming forward and, and, and speaking some profound words. Um, I also want to thank Gail Barrera for all the support you gave, in, give not only for today's event, but throughout uh, the process of Homer 2020. Doug Johnson, for all of your help. And really for so many who have gotten us to where we are, it's uh, been over three years to get us to a stage where we now feel we're at a point we can start graduating from the planning and design stage of the 10-year plan to end homelessness in Fort Collins and now move into a stage that is real implementation. This is where the real work begins. And as a part of this, I've got um, just a simple one-pager um, of the 10-year plan to end homelessness, which I'll just go ahead and pass around here just so that everyone has something to walk away with, because um, that's really what this is all about. Um, when we went down the road in the creating of a 10-year plan to end homelessness, we really didn't know what the final product would actually be. Uh, we didn't, but we knew whatever strategies that we came up with as, as a community they would not be based on well-intentioned and well-meaning but perhaps ultimately naive assumptions about what is homelessness. That it would come from really hard data that really gets to, under, to real understanding. And with the help of the Bohemian Foundation, uh, was able to provide us the necessary support for a point-in-time study, which we did just this past March. A point-in-time study is a snapshot, a one-day snapshot of what homelessness is like in our community. And we use that as, as a bedrock of understanding when we, when we sat down as, as a broader community and when we started doing some strategic brainstorming with our local business people, with our local homeless serving agencies and organizations, with local government advisors, with concerned citizens, and with homeless members of our city and putting together what is it going to take for our community to have a 10-year plan and what, is it, and what are some knowledge that we can take from our point in time study. And we did this with help and facilitation from Colorado State University. And all of these different forces converged over the course of this past summer in the creation of a 10-year plan to end homelessness. Because ultimately, a 10-year plan is only going to be successful if it has true community ownership and community authorship. But all of this being said, let us not forget that although we have indeed climbed a mountain in order to forge a 10-year plan to end homelessness in Fort Collins, it will be but the first foothill set against a giant mountain range and the obstacles that still lay in front of us. If a 10-year plan is a map to get us to where we want to go, we still need to build a boat and set sail a journey. And it won't be easy. We will make mistakes and we will learn from them. The 10-year plan is not a bound book, uh, but it is a loose leaf binder that will constantly be amended and improved as we continue to move through this process. Many hands and vantage points ranging across the entire, entire political spectrum and those ranging um, from all different and attuned to different faiths and beliefs will, will participate in this process and we'll get our hands dirty in different ways if our community is truly to be one that has successfully handled this issue. The good news is that we will also be rewarded our local businesses will be rewarded by not having homelessness around our local commercial and retail districts. Our local detention centers and hospitals will not be disproportionately emitting homeless into, into the system. Our schools will not feel the need to overcompensate for our homeless students. Our homeless will no longer be homeless and they will be more complete members of our community and in such be contributive members to what makes our city great. If we are to get to this point, then this is something we all truly can feel good about. Fort Collins already has much to be proud of. As many people across the country have come to realize, ending homelessness is yet another meaningful step in what makes this community great. No 10-year plan can completely and honestly look at this issue without looking at homelessness prevention, without looking at services, without looking at child care, without looking at employment without looking at domestic violence, without looking at education and substance abuse and mental health and transportation and housing and all of the critical players and organizations that are going to be necessary in order to make it happen. However, a 10-year plan is not going to be successful trying to do everything at once. 
tough decisions need to be made, and we need to make focuses along a timeline. Our first step is to do a registry week, where we'll be going out into the community over the course of five days and nights late in the later part of this year, and we're going to do an in-depth census of who are our chronically homeless in the city. The chronic homeless are those members of our, of our community who are truly the most vulnerable. They are, these are the people who have been out on the streets, have been homeless for over a year. In many cases have a disability condi condition. And it's the highest costing form of homelessness. Addressing this subset of the larger homeless population will free up opportunities for those experiencing episodic homelessness. Once we have a true registry of who our chronically homeless are, we will look at the housing and support services that will, be, that will be needed in order for supply to meet demand. This will set the stage for victories down the road as we delve into homelessness among those who are temporarily out of a place they can permanently call home. We encourage you to be a part of this process and if you would like to volunteer for the Registry Week, please let me know. We are, we are engaging our community from our wealthiest members to our long-term homeless and everyone in between. We have talented organizations and agencies that exist in this community that are doing great work in addressing homelessness every day. We have business people who realize that social services are not best addressed by the government alone and are willing to participate. We have a faith community that is, that is eager to, to help. We have, a, we have a city government that is providing us the necessary leverage and leadership in order to make this happen. Together, we can create, as Chris Nealon stated, a flexible, a flexible and rapid responding network so that homelessness, while it certainly can occur, it will be rare, it will be short-lived, and it will be non-recurring. Money Magazine lists the best place to live has Fort Collins as sixth across the country. The criteria for being among the, on the short list of the choicest places to live within the city of Fort Collins was stated as, quote, plenty of jobs, great schools, safe streets, low crime, lots to do, charm, and all the great amenities that make a city a great place to raise a family. The sheer fact that this community has all of these things but is also willing to look within itself and see what it can do for its most vulnerable and, what, and its most destitute is really what makes this community truly wonderful. Because we're willing to do that despite all the great amenities that we have surrounding us. And it's also a statement to all of those who work on homelessness each and every day and all the organizations that, are, that participate. So please, go ahead, look at the 10-year plan that, it's laid, that is laid out We'll continue to improve upon it as we, as we move forward, but we now have a stance to now, the leveraging to now move forward to implementation. And we encourage you in different capacities uh, to participate in this process because again, this is, this is about helping those who are most vulnerable, but it's also ultimately about what makes this community the nth potential of what it really can become and building upon what's already such a great city. So thank you so much, please, um, Again, continue to communicate with us, and again, thank you so much for attending this morning.